All right, so um, a little while ago I had shared this picture online, and this is basically a picture that I'd done up of how our entire system is connected. So with fuses and shutoffs and disconnects and contactors and relays and stuff like that. Um, what we didn't know is wire sizes and wire lengths. So what Michelle and I did is we got in and sort of measured out, okay, this is gonna go here, this is gonna go there, um, and tried to make a decent guess at how long each run of cable would be. And we gave ourselves like the 20% or whatever just to be sure that we're gonna um, be able to hit it. So anyway, we did that and we got some cable ordered as well as all of these parts. So all of these, um, all of these parts have now been ordered. So we've ordered all the parts and all that. What we didn't really account for, well, we kind of did, but we didn't, was how tight that space would be. And so now we're gonna go through and try to wire as much as we can as the wire comes in before we mount that battery in. So um, <clears throat> the other thing we had done is gone through and Michelle had drawn um, that piece of wood on the side where each of the where each of the components would live. So now that we have this, we can start wiring the battery for uh, for the BMS and stuff like that. So we can get as much done while the things are outside as we can before we go in and and try to be all cramped in that little space. So um, so we'll start wiring some of this stuff up while we wait for the things that we ordered to actually get here. All right, so we've started the wiring on the batteries. So each one of these cords, or each one of these wires, goes to, the first one goes to the negative, and then each other one goes to a positive lead on that, on that circuit. So what this is, is this is our BMS. So we ordered a BMS from REC BMS. And so in the back, there's a place for each one of those wires to hook in. So there's a weird thing about this BMS in that we only have 14. This can have accept up to 16 cells. We only have 14, but this last one needs the absolute positive. So the absolute negative and the absolute positive need to go on either end of these. And so, and then 14 uh, positive leads in the front. So there'll be one blank one when we're done. So that's it. So this, the cells go in here. The relays go in here, they're for the uh, contactors. Um, this is for in case an error happens, it will turn power off to everything. So in here are, is the current sensor, which is the shunt, and then temperature sensors go in here. So in the front of the unit, we have the dipsticks, which allow you to address it, and then tell it how many cells you have. This is the CAN bus that goes to the Victron to tell it what the state of charge is. And then this uh, RS-45 is to program it. So we have a little USB dongle that we can put in our computer and set the parameters and stuff like that. When that's not in use, there's another little, there's another dongle that we put in and there's a little screen that will tell us the voltage of each individual cell as well as the temperature of the three probes and how much the overall system voltage is as well as the state of charge, meaning how much, what percent of the battery do we have left so that's why we've got a bunch of wires here and um, we've wired them all to come out the front because what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover these bus bars with the with this thick plastic um, sheeting and so um, it's gonna cover all of this so that if something accidentally bumps into this we don't have a short or something like that so um, that's what we're gonna do to kind of keep it a little bit more safe so here and here there's gonna be a jumper cable that connects these. There's gonna be a jumper that connects these as well. And then the main positive is coming out of here. And then the main negative is coming out of here. So it looks a little bit like a mess right now, but it'll get cleaned up and it'll, it'll start looking like it's supposed to, so. All right, we continue our work. So we've gone ahead and wired all the BMS wires. So they're coming out the front here now. So we've wired all those up, um, and now we've covered all of the bus bars um, with this plastic, it's called FlexGuard, um, and it's basically just to wrap 
cables and cable management, but it doesn't conduct electricity. So um, we thought, you know, if something accidentally bumps this or something accidentally hits this, it's much safer um, with this stuff on it than, you know, it doesn't look as cool as the uh, polished copper bus bars that we spent all that time doing, but I think this is gonna be a safer bet. And so we've gone ahead and um, wired all these up and each one of these has a little, has a little flag that tells us which cell it is and um, where it's going and all that stuff. So there are, there's one ground plus one thing for each cell plus one ultimate positive. So we've wired those all in now and um, this whole thing will slide in to the RV and then there will essentially be a wall on this side that these will then go around and um, go into our little BMS unit. So, um, so this is the progress for tonight. Um, we're trying to wire up as much as we can before we go try to put this thing in here because it's, it's basically myself and my wife and um, <laughs> this thing weighs about 400 pounds. So we're probably gonna have one sort of chance at getting it in there. We're not gonna be wanting to move it in and out all the time. The bay itself is really small. So just to even get this in here, um, it's going to be quite a challenge to, to get it in there. So we're, we've got our thinking caps on and we've started thinking of ways to sort of maneuver it in there. Um, worst case scenario, we're gonna have to take this whole thing apart. So we'll take the whole thing apart and then rebuild it inside there. We don't want to do that. So we're going to try our very best to um, to actually get this thing in there without having to do that. So we've got a couple ideas on, on how to do that. They're all pretty crazy. So um, we'll, see. we'll see how it goes. But we're done wiring it for tonight and we've covered it up. And we're pretty happy with sort of the way it turned out. But the, the top guy here is this is the the f most positive one so the wire with the big lead will come out of here and then the big lead will come out of the negative here and then those three jumpers have to come on this side so these aren't completely covered yet we can still go ahead and pull these out we haven't zip tied them all on yet so these we can still pull back and get to the bolt there um, we probably will tape off some of this metal stuff just to be sure that we don't arc or anything like that and just to kind of just to insulate it in case there's a you know there's any slip of a wrench or something like that that could that could be a bad thing so anyway we'll probably insulate all this other stuff around here just with electrical tape or vinyl tape or maybe paint there's a vinyl paint stuff that you can use also but um, this is the battery so far anyway um, it's been fun but we're pretty tired now, so we'll we'll try it again tomorrow morning. All right, so we've got the mock-up of the stand. So this is the stand that we uh, that we built a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago, and we've positioned the battery in. And so you can kind of, you can see how it's secured in there. So um, these go through here. These will have to be cut off. They'll have to be ground down because there's a wall. This will this will sit flat. With a, with a back wall, or I'm sorry, with a side wall inside of the bay. And so this, um, this cage sort of works to help protect the battery as well as keep it secure in its location. So there'll be six big giant bolts that go down through the floor and get screwed up. And then these will mount with these brackets. There's three holes on each side. Um, so they'll mount in those three holes. They'll also mount in the back. So in that bay, there's an L bracket that, um, that we've drilled these holes with. So these should fit um, right underneath that L bracket. And then we've welded nuts onto the back of those, onto the back of those trays. We've mocked it all up, first of all, to be sure it fits and to be sure we're gonna be able to wire and where to drill holes and how to mount this thing in. Um, it will be a challenge to get that thing in there, so um, I'm not sure how much recording we're gonna do on that because it's there's probably gonna be a fair amount of cussing and stuff, so it's, it's, it's gonna to be tough to do. So anyway, um, this is what it looks like so far. Um, we probably will drill some holes in this. 
um, get this ready to accept the cable. All right, so on this other side, this is the other side, this is the passenger side. Um, what we've done is this is attached with four bolts here. And then these are the bolts that are holding the battery together. So as you can see, that'll keep it from going back and forth at all. Um, those just fit those bolts perfectly if this thing gets jarred around. This thing is also, um, we made it about a quarter inch too small here so that when we push it in, it compresses the pack just a little bit, just a quarter of an inch, so that it squeezes that pack in there and holds it in there really well. Um, it's worked out pretty well. <laughs> we, we, you know, we kind of decided to do that at the last minute and it's worked out really well. Um, it is a, just about a quarter of an inch when we, when, when we uh, loosen it up, it's just about a quarter of an inch till it's tight and it cinches everything together. So that should hopefully work out. On this side, there's a little bit of a challenge because these, these are so far up. So we've made some, we have some spacers that are gonna fit through there and then they'll be bolted in through the bottom. So that should be good enough with three on this side, three on that side, and then four uh, along the back wall to secure this top cell. Hopefully that's enough to keep this guy in place. So that's what it looks like from the back. So again, the plan is um, when we install this thing is to put this battery module in first. The problem is we only have like a 22 inch hole to go through. So we'll put this module in first and then we're going to try to jack it up somehow. So we haven't figured that out yet. So we're going to use a jack or something to lift it up and out of the way. Once it's up and out of the way, we're going to put the orange carrier in. Um, we're going to slide it in into position and put this battery back on top of this. So this will be empty and they'll just have the battery on top. So then we'll put the bolts in through the ground. We'll secure these guys back here and then um, start securing this top battery uh, through the six side holes. So once those six side holes are secured and it's secured in the back and this thing's bolted down, um, what we'll do then is we'll slide this bottom battery in. So hopefully that'll be a little easier than this one. They are pretty heavy. These are um, about 200 pounds per module. And it's just me and my wife, who's maybe 125 pounds. So um, it's gonna be a challenge to do that. But um, we've got some jacks and we're gonna use some ramps and use some Egyptian technology to try to get them in there. So this one will slide in and then we'll bolt it down just as it's seen here. And then we'll worry about making the connections here and putting the lugs in. So this side, on this side, should be reachable, which is why we went with the BMS wires coming out of here. Um, uh, this should be reachable via the, the, uh, the door open. So the door will be open and we'll be able to get to most of this side stuff here. So that's the reason we kind of, the battery is the configuration that it is. On the other side, um, there's an open space um, that's about 15 by 15 where there was a vent and that's what we'll use to secure the three holes on that side plus make these three connections and then once we've done that um, we're going to close that off because we have an AC in there that blows cold air in on that side and so that closed off area will represent the hot versus the cold side so the the side with the battery and the inverter, charge controller, all that stuff will be air conditioned. And then the other side, um, there's an exhaust port that we built into the bottom. And um, that's where the hot side of the AC is. So hopefully that works out. Um, this is all still just kind of an experiment. So, but that's the plan so far.